Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm doing a quick lecture on TPAC, uh, making sense of TPAC. Uh, this is mostly um, as my students and, and colleagues uh, try to think about teaching and learning and how to effectively integrate technology into pedagogy. Uh, I think it's important to think about the, the best ways to make this mixture happen. Um, and one of the models that I use a lot is the TPAC framework. Um, by uh, Matt Kohler and, and Mishra from Michigan State. Um, so I want to take a little bit of time to unpack TPAC. Um, and this is primarily a lecture I give in my class, but by all means, uh, feel free to follow along and enjoy um, if you've got about 20, 25 minutes to kill. So, and I'll share this slide deck in the, uh, in the summary for the video. Um, so the, the tweetable summary where we're headed with this is the thinking that, or the understanding that, um, instruction should be guided by pedagogy content knowledge and technology those three factors i think should guide all instructional decisions um, and so that would uh, inform our use of technology in the classroom you know should we integrate tech if so what tools should we integrate um, that also informs different pedagogies different ways that we frame teaching and learning and assessment so you know do we want to leverage hybrid or blended learning and then that also uh, is impact or informed by content knowledge. Um, what content knowledge do you have to have in order to teach this? What content knowledge are you trying to share or bring to your students? So I think all of these different elements impact, uh, should impact uh, teaching and learning and decisions we make about instruction. So typically in my class where I begin is with thinking about theory. There are a couple of different reasons for this. In a lot of my framing across my classes, I indicate that I want my students to think critically and be willing to take uh, chances as they think about teaching and learning. Um, and these decisions should be framed by their experience, but also theory. It should be an equal mixture of the two. Um, since many of them don't have a lot of experience in the classroom, we need to rely on theory. And I want to take a little bit of time to talk about, well, what exactly is theory? Um, and, and you'll notice in this slide deck, I, I do a lot of defining of things because I feel like we don't spend enough time talking about what these specific uh, elements of our class are. Um, and and by that, I mean, you know, as an example, we spend two or three weeks in, in most of my classes at the beginning talking about theory or theoretical perspectives or, um, you know, what does, you know, and the question is, what is theory? What is it? How do we get to it? Why is theory important? This video um, that's put out by PBS um, they basically really unpack the science involved and, and how we move from, how, you know, first of all, that we don't really have fact or law in education or in, in our thinking about theory. Um, but then they, they explicate this idea of how do we get to theory and make sense of theory. Um, I typically in class will play the video as a way to like activate prior knowledge and I'll link to the video in this summary. Um, but then what I do is I come back to this still from the video and basically unpack the fact that, you know, we don't really have facts. You know, we do have facts in our classroom, though, you know, there is, um, you know, there are facts within our content. So if you're teaching social studies, um, there are specific dates, there are specific locations, there are people um, and those um, you know, we can't have any real ambiguity to that. There is a fact there. Um, and, and we don't really have laws. You know, we have specific scientific laws. Um, but in terms of framing instruction, we don't really have facts or laws that we deal with. We do have hypotheses or we should develop hypotheses and test those and develop theory. So one of the things I explained to my students after the video is, you know, you might have a, an explanation. You might say, okay, well, all students that wear glasses in my classes typically do better on tests. And you might look at one class. Let's say you have five sections of a class. Um, you might look at one class and see the two or three students that wear glasses and they have higher grades. And so you make this hypothesis that I think they did better in my class. And I think most students that, you know, wear glasses in my classes will do better. That might work for your one class, but then you want to try and test that hypothesis. So you might look at 
your other classes, your four or five classes. And let's suggest that you also realize that all of the other students in all of your other classes, the ones that wear glasses generally do better on your assessments and they do better in your class. So you've tested the hypothesis and it may be quote unquote true for your classes, for your students in your area. But then you might want to test other students, you know, in the same grade level, um, you know, across other schools, across other classes. You might test other students, you know, across the state. So I might look at other students that, you know, take my literacy class or my technology classes across other higher ed institutions in pre-service programs, you know, at other state institutions and see how they do and if indeed students that wear glasses do better in those instances. Um, and it's so it's, it's further testing this. So if we're if we're testing these hypotheses across a number of situations, across a number of placements, and it's all found to be true, quote unquote true, then we ultimately develop theory. And so the idea is that regardless of the space, regardless of the place, regardless of um, the, the location or the individual or the instructor, this is generally true. Um, my thinking is that if you were to conduct that test, you would ultimately find that um, you know, for the most part, it's not really true that just because you wear glasses, you're going to do better than other people. But when we look at theory, when we look at educational theory or theoretical perspectives, once again, what's happening is we are trying to make decisions about observable traits or observable behaviors in our classroom. We're trying to make sense of that, trying to figure out why things are the way that they are. And so previously, you know, it, it, we study the individuals that form most of the original theories. So, you know, early on, uh, theoreticians would look at situations in teaching and learning, and they would look at situations in the classroom. They would study the way that people learn or how cognition develops, and they would make a hypothesis. And then year after year, location after location, individual after individual, we would test this. And then after uh, it, it increasingly was proven to be, you know, quote unquote true, then we developed theory. And theory is a roadmap, it is a guide for teaching and learning in our classroom. So moving on from there, once we sort of get a handle on what is theory, then we take a little, little bit of time, we talk about, well, what is content knowledge? What is content area knowledge? What is pedagogy? Um, so, and, and once again, these are things that we don't really unpack a lot in our classrooms for some reason. Um, and so content knowledge is, you know, what is the, the, the knowledge or the information or the understanding in a specific content? Um, so I might say, okay, what is all of the content that you would, all of the information you would need to know in math or all of the information uh, that you would need to know in social studies or history? So that's your content knowledge, the content area knowledge. We're looking at unpacking what are the specific elements of math, um, you know, for a specific grade, for a specific group. So what are those elements within the, the content um, that, that uh, help formulate all of that? Um, and then pedagogy really is the science of teaching and learning and assessment. It's all of the instruction and the science behind it. Um, and, and it's really, it's interesting that a lot of students, and once again, we talk about theory and pedagogy and content knowledge and, and, and what do these things really mean and why is it important? And then I go on to ask students, well, how you are supposed to be an expert on all of these when you leave us from a pre-service teacher program, where are we assessing this? So that's a fun discussion. Um, so moving on from there, I basically try to unpack, well, what decisions should we make as we frame instruction? So the thinking is that, okay, this circle here, for those of you that have studied Venn diagrams in years past or made your own, you know, this circle here is content. So this is all the content knowledge that you need to know about like math or about science. And then this is pedagogy. So this is everything you need to know about teaching, learning, and assessment about the science behind it. So if we look at this is content knowledge and this is pedagogy, pedagogical knowledge, when we overlap, we get this sliver, um, you know, and we know from a Venn diagram that those are those two intersecting. That sliver is pedagogical content knowledge or PCK. So we have a discussion about what is involved in that. Like, what does that mean? Um, and PCK is basically identifying, well, this is content and this is pedagogy. So 
This little sliver is talking about the pedagogy, the teaching and learning assessment that is specific or germane to this content. So it might be, you know, if this is math and this is pedagogy, then this is, okay, what are the specific pedagogies or the different instructional practices or routines that are, are more helpful or more beneficial or more specific to math? Okay, so that's trying to make sense of PCK and pedagogical content knowledge. So uh, to help the students think about it a little bit more, we could say, okay, if we look at pedagogy as, as informing all of this, we might break it down and say, okay, general pedagogical content knowledge or general PCK is looking at history, math, English, science. Um, if we get into domain specific PCK, we might say, okay, moving down from the disciplines, we're going to further, you know, bifurcate, we're going to further split and get into um, science PCK, and that might be made up of like geology, biology, chemistry, physics. Um, and then we might say, okay, well, chemistry, let's unpack chemistry. And are there topic specific, uh, you know, pedagogical content knowledge? So then we could break down chemistry into solubility, oxidation. Um, and so we can continue to unpack this stuff over time and get more and more specific, moving from the general to the domain to the topic, and all the while thinking about pedagogical content knowledge. So once we sort of make sense of this, the, the next step is I add one more layer on top. And at this point, students' eyes are glazing over um, because it's it's hard to, you know, keep in mind in this, what we're doing is we're talking about mental constructs. We're talking about things that you really can't, you know, uh, pick up and hold. These are abstract elements. So we're looking at mental constructs or mental maps and thinking about how we frame or consider teaching and learning. But we're still dealing with the same stuff. So if you were following me along, ignore this bottom part here. If you were following along and you looked at content area knowledge, you looked at this content and you looked at this pedagogy, back here is this PCK that we talked about. So let's keep it simple. This is math. This is pedagogy. So this is pedagogy that's specific to or, um, you know, works well, plays well with math. OK, so there's our PCK. We got that. We already unpacked that two slides earlier. So if we have that, then what happens when we add this other layer or lens or, you know, other circle of this Venn diagram? What happens when we add technology to this? Um, you know, first of all, what is this? sphere what does this circle represent so technology it could be the various digital texts and tools it could be our mobile devices it could be our apps it could be different platforms but we're talking about general technology use um, and, and the fun thing is that you know technology is always changing these practices and these tools are always changing um, for some educators that is uh, problematic. It's a bit unnerving. I like it. I like the fact that things are always changing. I think to teach with technology, you have to have an appreciation for the fact that things are always changing. But basically, we have this lens that's talking about all of the, the, the knowledge that you have and information and skill in technology. All of that's encompassed by that. And then what we do is if we slide this on top of this C, this content piece, what, you know, are there specific technologies or apps or platforms or strategies or the specific elements of technology that are better suited for this content. So if this is math, once again, to pick on math a little bit more, if this is math and we slide in this technology, this technology, <laughs> technology, way to go, this technology, uh, you know, circle, what is this sliver? What is this TCK, the technological content knowledge? Well, what that's talking about is, are there specific technologies that are more specific or better used with math, okay, or science or social studies? And the same thing is when we look at technology and we cover it up or overlap it with the, the pedagogy, we're looking at this technological pedagogical knowledge. So are there specific pedagogies? that better are, are better suited for different technologies or vice versa. Are there certain technologies that support different pedagogies better? So it's that overlap and saying, okay, what is the harmony here between these two? So all we're looking at is this technology circle. And then we're looking at the content. We're looking at the pedagogy and trying to figure out what does this overlap mean? Okay. So all we're doing is sliding in this technology circle. So if we've got that, then what we try to figure out is, 
what does middle ground mean? Okay, what's that area, that sweet spot where everything intersects? What does that thing mean? So, I mean, here on this, we're looking at technological, pedagogical content knowledge. So if we keep layering this up, then we're thinking about content. So I'm a math teacher. You know, I'm a science teacher. I know my content. Now, if I slide in the pedagogy, I know certain pedagogies are better suited for my work as a math or a science teacher. Okay, I got that. And then we slide in technology and say, okay, I'm a math teacher. I know there's certain pedagogies that best suit it. Now, are there specific digital tools, technological devices, educational technologies, instructional technologies? Are there different tools that are better suited to support my content and my pedagogy? That's bringing that layer in. And basically, this is that sweet spot that we're all aiming for. There's a couple reasons why I like this model. One of them is when I work with teachers, pre-service teachers and veteran educators, sometimes there's this belief that I don't get technology. I don't like technology. I don't believe in it. And what I say is, okay, that's fine. But when we start our workshop, when we start our class, you first of all have a lot of expertise because you are an expert in your content area knowledge. You're an expert in your content. If you're not, that's a bigger issue. I can't help you with that for this. You know, I, I can't help you. You got to go back someplace else, but you should be an expert in your content. And also you should be an expert in pedagogy or at least constantly informing your pedagogy and your thinking about pedagogy. Um, and you should be experimenting with pedagogy. Um, and, and, and content is usually changing and pedagogy is usually changing and it should evolve and develop. But for the most part, you should have these two um, down pat. And what I can do is I can help you understand and think about technology and I, I can help you think about the specific technologies that you might want to fold in to these other two. So the thinking is that you should already have this. So if you come into this and think that I'm not an expert, I just can't do this. Well, if you look at it once again, two thirds of the pie, you already understand. So there's only a little bit more that you have to slide in and, and you, th you know, slide it in a little bit and then gradually expand this area in the middle um, and, and think and iterate and develop and design over time. Um, and so I, I like that because it, it lends, it, it, it makes educators believe that they already are, are experts in this, that they are empowered and they, they already know a lot of this stuff. And I think that's important. Um, and so if, if we sort of clean it all up, if we clean up the TPAC model and we flip it around, um, this is one of the heuristics or one of the diagrams that we see frequently online when we study it. And all we're doing is we're basically cleaning it up and we're saying, okay, here's the technological knowledge that we talked about. Here's the pedagogical knowledge. Here's your content area knowledge. Here's this PCK. Here's the TPK, the technological pedagogical knowledge. And then here's my TCK, my technological content knowledge. And when we overlap all of these different lenses, um, then we get into this TPAC area, the technological pedagogical content knowledge. And that's that sweet spot that we're looking at. Now, of course, um, uh, this is one of the models that I use a lot in my work. Um, one of the other models that I use frequently is the, um, the ecological theory model by Bronfenbrenner, um, the, the series of concentric rings to think about culture and society and these different forces that impact um, cognition, among other things. And so what I like about this, too, is we bring in um, this circle surrounding this that says, okay, we, we also have to think about the different contexts in which we're doing, we're using this. So this might be different grade level. This might be different purpose. This might be a different environment. Um, but there are different contexts that impact all of this. So once we get students to this part, um, then I basically add this final layer on. Um, and this is from one of, uh, Mr. and Kohler's pubs. And we're looking at TPAC and what these different elements mean. And this basically is just uh, drilling down a little bit more and really defining what each one of these elements is. So if we look at pedagogical knowledge, this is the knowledge and practice of teaching and learning that an educator can use, such as classroom management, taxonomies, planning, and assessment. So this is a lot of the stuff that we've talked about. It's just their specific definitions. All of this I already talked about in this video. Um, 
So once again, what we're talking about here is TPAC is looking at the technology, um, looking at the pedagogical options and the pedagogical decisions that we make and how all of those intersect um, and support and, and help uh, inform content and then ultimately instruction in our classroom. Um, for me, it's a helpful model. Like I said, one, because it helps the educator understand that they already have expertise in this two thirds of this pie they already understand and they they have expertise and they've demonstrated expertise in that and the only need is to think about those different technologies and yeah you might be struggling with different tools and there's new tools all the time and things are changing and I can't trust any of these new platforms or tools um, but you can go out on research and you can try new things and you can test one thing and, and test it out and as you test out that one tool or that one app or that one platform um, you can think about okay what does this do to pedagogy can I take my same pedagogical decisions and fold it in do I need to frame pedagogy in a different way do I need to operationalize pedagogy differently um, and then also how is this informed by content um, so if I have um, you know students blogging if they're reading together and blogging, um, you know, the specific tools that I use for blogging, is it better, uh, you know, is it better suited for a different content? Like, would that still work in a math class or a science class? And then what pedago what pedagogical decisions would I make in that? Um, so once again, we, we've been taking a look at TPAC. Um, that's a, a model or a heuristic that basically attempts to identify the nature of knowledge required by teachers for technology integration in teaching while addressing the all of the other multifaceted uh, elements of teaching and learning and so that and also that situated nature of teacher knowledge um, so hopefully this is of benefit to you um, please subscribe if you haven't already please thumbs up thumbs down the video leave me comments below if i messed up things um, and by all means hopefully you enjoyed it and have a great rest of your day